Las Vegas, the one of the most videotaped places in the world, you know, in terms of surveillance and, and so forth, because so many people, you know, there's so much money, there's so many people trying to cheat the casinos, there's, you know what I mean? Why was there no videotape? I mean, there's videotape of the MGM altercation, but there was no videotape of anything that happened after that. Keep in mind, you know, these are, the, this is 1996. Uh, we look at it from a 2015 perspective. This is 1996. You know, the videotape surveillance is not as prevalent, um, especially out on streets. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, uh, it, it's not surprising at all that there isn't more video footage. We're lucky that we have what we have. And even with that, the MGM, with the best surveillance, you know, for that day, the best surveillance equipment available, and you see how grainy and, uh, you know, the low quality of what we do have. So that, uh, you know, that puts into perspective the times. And it's even, I'm, at one point, like, it's even obstructed in terms of the, the MGM video. You know, they go behind, like, a pillar or something, and there's, no, there's no other camera, I guess. And yeah, so there's a big fountain there. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, there's a, there's a camera technician or an operator sitting in an office somewhere and he's looking at all these monitors and he sees something taking place and he's kind of joysticking in order to move the camera around. Oh, so someone's actually sitting there moving. This wasn't just a, a sweeping camera. Someone's actually sitting there trying to find. That particular one. Then there's also, you know, st kind of a still, still cameras um, that are throughout the rest of the, um, the MGM. And so when you look online and you watch the full MGM video, that's a compilation of a lot of different cameras all patched together. Gotcha. So, from your point of view, do you feel that Las Vegas PD dropped the ball, or do you feel that they, they just had such limited resources because of the non-cooperation that they did the best they could? I think that Las Vegas wanted, like, like any other murder, you know, homicide investigators want to solve the case. Um, but when you're dealing with people that are either uncooperative or outright lying to you about uh, the information that they have, it makes it very difficult. And you can develop an attitude of, well, shit, if they don't give a shit about us solving the case, why should we? I'm not saying that that was the perspective, but it certainly is a perspective in law enforcement uh, among certain investigators is that if the people who are closest to our victim aren't willing to cooperate, how far can we go with our investigation? What can we actually accomplish? You know, we weren't there, we didn't see it, and if the people who were there and did see it aren't really providing any valuable information, it's difficult to move forward. But this is an incident with international ramifications. Like this, Tupac, in 2015, most hip-hop fans still consider him the best rapper of all time. This was a this wasn't just a random gang member who got killed in Vegas and, you know, it was just a random, it was just like a, a run-of-the-mill kind of situation because this is what happens. This is Tupac, the movie star, the platinum-selling artist, the, the, you know, the guy who's dating Madonna. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's at a very huge level at this point. So... Yeah, the people around are not cooperating, but there's international pressure that's making Las Vegas PD look bad for not being able to solve this. You always look bad if you don't solve something, and it is your responsibility to solve something. So that's unavoidable. You're, you know, people are going to question your competence or question your motives or you know, your, you know, your uh, um, interest in solving it. Um, but it's a, it's a you know, perfect storm of uh, events that uh, actually prevented it from being solved. So yeah, I get that, uh, that there's a lot of pressure and a lot of interest, um, but you have to deal with the information that's available. And if you don't have information to work with, what are you gonna do? So Keefe D comes in. He testifies for hours with you guys. Based on what he's saying, is it all matching up? Yeah. It does. Um, we didn't just take his word for anything. You know, we know that uh, you know he's a 
he's a career criminal, uh, he's a gang member, and uh, that, um, you know, he's uh, going to have to be corroborated on every level in order to verify whether or not he's telling the truth. And everything he told us checked out from start to finish. And when you have that type of corroboration and you're providing that information under these very compelling circumstances that he was, um, you know, empirically, you start to recognize that it's true. So after all of that, all of the uh, confessions that he gave you guys, what did that result in for him? It resulted in him getting away with murder. It resulted in him getting away with a, uh, a very serious federal drug offense. So, you know, he walked away from this thing um, basically unscathed. So they, you guys actually dropped your charges against him? We had never actually charged him. We just informed him of the potential charges that we had built, but we never charged him. Okay, so based on what he came in and said, the, the U.S. District Attorney agreed not to go forward with the charges That's against correct. KPD. That's correct. And remember, the entire objective of this task force was to solve murders. And if we have to, uh, you know, it's all, um, you know, it's all a matter of um, trying to reach that objective and that goal. And solving the murders was more important than um, you know, pursuing drug crimes. Had he not cooperated with you guys on the drug charges, because ultimately no one was being charged with the murder of Tupac. That's correct. But he was about to get charged with this PCP and drug ring mm -hmm. and cocaine ring. Had you guys gone forward with those charges and he got convicted in a court for those charges, how long would he have gotten in prison? Life. Life. So he, he was fighting a life, a life sentence, essentially. That's correct. Why he life? would have gotten 25 because there's a minimum mandatory sentencing. And because of his prior drug convictions and the amount of drugs that we would have charged him with and the crimes that we would have charged him with, he would have gotten 25 to life. And, uh, you know, that's when you're in your late 40s, you know, that's a, uh, essentially a life sentence. So he got away with, with all the drug charges, essentially. So he was never charged. That's correct. So he go, comes in. He confesses to all this stuff. He implicates himself. But, of course, by him testifying, that excludes... Uh, that that ex excludes the confession from being used against him. Right? That's correct. It's, it's uh, almost like... A almost like a limited immunity. Now, if other people came forward and we were to av able to gather evidence against Keefe D through other sources, he could certainly be charged. Under this agreement, he just couldn't be charged based on his own self-incriminating statements. So that's where the protection lied. He'd cooperate and we would take what he had to tell us and it wouldn't be used against him. However, we could take what he had to tell us and use it against anybody else he implicated, uh, but just not himself. Well. By that time, by the time he testified, Orlando Anderson was already killed. That's right. In an, an unrelated kind of situation. I understand there was a shootout that happened over some money that was owed or whatever, and Orlando Anderson was killed. But Keefe D is actually testifying against other people in the car as well. Not testifying, but providing providing information. Providing information, yeah. He was providing information about other people that were in the vehicle. Now, if you're in the vehicle, it doesn't matter. You can't say, yeah, I was there when they killed Tupac, but I looked the other way and I wasn't part of it. If you're in the car, you are now part of the crime. Is that correct? Not necessarily. I mean, you can claim that, hey, I was just driving and, you know, we, we went over to, you know, to confront these guys and out of nowhere, Orlando, you know, pulls out a gun and starts shooting. I didn't know he was going to do that. I mean, that could be a defense claim. Uh, it's not very reasonable, but certainly you could claim that. Um, but based on all the set of circumstances and all the information that we know, they were all uh, willingly and agreeingly, uh, you know, collaborating or conspiring to kill Tupac. By the time the Keefe D uh, gave you that information, Orlando was gone. What about the other 
two members of the car. Dre was already gone. Uh, he was in the uh, passenger seat behind okay. the driver. How did, how did he die? He died from natural causes, obesity and uh, health-related causes. Okay. And uh, Terrence Anderson, the driver, he just recently died. Uh, he was shot and killed inside of a marijuana dispensary in Compton. And uh, so now... When was this? Just, just recently, within the last couple months. Oh. So, KVD's last man standing. But at the time that he testified, the driver was still alive. That's correct. Okay, so he goes and test. Oh, I'm sorry. He, he goes and gives information about the driver. Did you guys go and follow up with the driver? Unfortunately, not. That's where law enforcement completely dropped the ball. Uh, we provided the information back to Las Vegas uh, about uh, KVD's confession, uh, implicating Terrence Brown, the driver. Uh, Terrence Brown, at this time, is you know still criminally active in Compton, and uh, uh, there was no proactive effort. Uh, to put him into the same position that we'd put Keefe into, and that's build, you know, develop charges against him and bring him in, and you can use the confessions against one another. Um, but there was no proactive investigation after uh, we after we had acquired Keefe D's uh, confession uh, to pursue Terrence Brown. Could you have pursued Terrence Brown, or Las Vegas ha had to pursue it? We could have in Los Angeles. I would have just went and developed an independent drug of in investigation against him. I'd have started surveillance, doing basically the same thing I did against Keefe, and put him into a very compromising position, and uh, you know, develop intelligence and evidence, and uh, put him into the same position. Um, but I was taken off the case uh, shortly after we had acquired this information. The LAPD disbanded the task force after we'd solved Biggie's case, and the whole thing just kind of dissipated. Why? I think that uh, for the LAPD, um, they had, you know, we had gotten to this point where they could get out from under this massive lawsuit being waged against them by Biggie's estate. And at this point in time, you know, so much money and resources and uh, manpower had been spent trying to investigate this case and to defend the city, they just, uh, they just walked away from it all after uh, they got out from under the lawsuit. Well, what happened with the, with the Biggie lawsuit? The Biggie lawsuit was dismissed, um, basically retracted by the estate itself. Once we developed the evidence pointing away from the LAPD and the LAPD's culpability, um, the uh, estate of Biggie Smalls decided they weren't gonna spend any more time or money to pursue a lawsuit that they knew they couldn't win. So because LAPD managed to get the Biggie wrongful death lawsuit dismissed, were they worried that if you kept digging into the Tupac thing, that it would that that lawsuit might reemerge? No, not at all. There was no there was no crossover as far as involvement or allegations of involvement of LAPD in Tupac's murder. Uh, so that they weren't connected in that way. So there was no fear of that whatsoever. Um, the LAPD just decided to kind of let sleeping dogs lie and uh, walk away from it all after they've gotten out front of the lawsuit. They disbanded the task force and uh, we told Las Vegas PD what we had, had discovered and uh, left it up to them to pursue it. And they didn't pursue it? Clearly not. Were you upset? Absolutely. Do you think there was some sort of conspiracy? No, not at all. I think it's just an attitude of indifference. Um, you know, so much time had passed, so many witnesses uh, had died, and uh, it, was, it was ultimately going to be a very, very difficult um, case to try to prosecute in court, especially after what we had, you know, the information that we had acquired in the investigation. And uh, for, for, for practical purposes, I can kind of understand the, the bureaucratic decision to let everything just go. Um, but from a personal standpoint, from an investigative standpoint, it was very disheartening. I mean, there's, um, both of those cases deserve to be.